Good morning, everyone. I welcome you to the third Sunday of Easter, and also I welcome all our youth, our siblings from our sister churches on Staten Island. They have been here since yesterday, and we had great time at worship last night at 5 p.m. They slept over, and they are all refreshed. <laughs> and their leaders, their leaders are, are a blessing to every one of us. As they nurture these, our future leaders. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you for all that we have done throughout the week. We pray as we come to your presence to offer you thanks and prayers that you accept them in Jesus Christ's name. We pray. Amen. Our opening hymn is in your hymn num, number 192, this joyful Easter tide. <laughs>
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you and the uni in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts. Peter addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you have handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate. So he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did, your, all your, sorry, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Your mortals, how long will you be in of my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and wonder at faithless gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Let him open the ears of the blind, 
Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine and oil increase. The epistle is from John is from John. See what the see what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the wor- world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children. Now what we will be has not been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he, he is, and all who have this hope in him purify themselves, as, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty for lawlessness, Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins. And in him, there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or know him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous. Just as just as he is righteous, the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified, and told that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? 
Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a God does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when we had said this, when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Why in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of bread fish. And he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the sons must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, So, it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So, this is Easter season. And we know, just as well as the people in the fourth century, that Jesus resurrected from the dead. It was not something to be hidden anymore because we, they heard the news first from Mary Magdalene that on the morning of Easter went to the tomb to go and anoint Jesus' body. And she saw that the tomb was empty. We also know that John and Peter, they ran out to the tomb to go see. Is Mary Magdalene telling us the truth? They ran there. And what did they find? An empty tomb. When Luke wrote this gospel, we also know that the two disciples, one was Cleopas, that were returning. You remember, after the crucifixion, they were all disappointed, dissoluted. And two of them were returning back. These were men that were called as disciples. They were returning back. And what happened? They encountered Jesus unknowingly that joined them in the conversation for a long time. And then they found out that this is our Lord. When he sat with them and said, let's break bread together. So we have all these news floating around. And then 
Jesus appeared again to the disciples. And they were frightened. They were terrified. Did he really rise from the dead? They see how that doubts. And Jesus asked them, why do you let doubt arise from your heart? You've heard all this news from three different sources now. And I'm here. Why are you still frightened? Why do you still have doubts in your heart? You can see me. Bones and flesh. Which we know ghost does not possess. He kept on trying to prove that yes, he resurrected. And still seeing their looks, their eyes, and say, well, you know what? Do you have something to eat here? Which is very unusual. Because in the Middle East, or some parts of Africa, when you go to visit someone, hospitality is a big deal. First of all, they offer you some water. Before you settle down to sit and all of that, they come up with a big, like in my place where I come from, they come up with big pump de diem. As Chino Achebe will describe it, a mountain of pandadium in front of you and invite you to eat. But this is not occurred when Jesus appeared to them. Jesus had to ask them, do you have anything here to eat? They offered him bread fish. He ate in their presence to prove again and again, and again. And in the end, he said, well, you saw me. You heard when I was crucified. And now, you are my witnesses. You are witnesses to this, that I have also resurrected. You are witnesses to this. You see, in our Christian journey, we have a lot of questions, we have a lot of doubts about the written word that appears in our scriptures. And the reason that we have that is because of our individual experiences in the world. Now we saw in our first reading where Peter, remember, Peter also was going around telling people it is an empty tomb. Peter and John, on the Sabbath, they walked down to the temple because they had to do that three times a day. And then they saw this man that was lame, begging for money, for arms. Remember, uh, uh, disciples, they don't have money. <laughs> they just live on, you know, the, the, um, the, the gratitude and the, uh, for, from people. And this man was asking, you know, give us money, give us money. And Peter looked at him and said, you remember the, the line, silver or gold have I known? Best. I have one thing. What is it? In the name, the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And took his right hand and raised him. His limbs got stronger and he walked. You are witnesses to this. You know, we are witnesses to this by extension because we have read the scriptures, we know what the prophets said. We know what the law of Moses said. We know what we have read in the Psalms. 
These are two different, three different sources. We know what the truth is. We are also witnesses. And Peter, as a witness, now Jesus has told you, yeah, you are my witnesses. Peter went out and started using the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to heal. As we are also witnesses, our task in the 24th century is also to take this gospel, the good news, out to our community, to our friends, to our neighbors, and proclaim it. That Jesus Christ died for our sins to remove our imperfection from us and rose the third day. That you cannot proclaim, I am a witness to this because I have read the truth and I believe the truth. I am also a witness to this. That we must believe in our Lord Jesus Christ. And by his name, by faith, we can move mountains. People might say, well, I, I pray so often and I don't get any results. Remember, faith, believing, that before I even pray, I know that God is going to listen to me and heal me and guide me and protect me and shield me from my enemies. That faith in the name of Jesus of Nazareth rise up and walk. Amen. Let us stand to reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. Lord, we pray for everlasting love and kindness to be shared throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, please protect our country and our leaders from all wars and division. Help others in need and protect America. 
Lord, in your mercy. We, pr- we pray that God, God's hand reaches out and guides war-stricken countries to peace. We pray that the hungry and the shelterless find their needs. We pray that the schools receive the funding they need to make a safe and stable environment. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the food insecure of our community, that they may feel support from their fellow brothers and sisters of their parish and neighborhood communities. Lord, in your mercy. God, we pr- God, we pray you watch over us, that you may guide those of us who have fallen on hard times. We pray that you alleviate our hardships and keep us in your eternal life. Watch over your children and keep them from straying from your path of light and grace. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the departed and their grieving families, including those who have been lost to violence and war. May they rest in eternal peace. Lord, in your mercy. We also pray for all those listed in our prayer list. God, we continue to heal them and hear them when they pray. God of our Father, you see your children growing up in an unsteady and confusing world. Show them that your ways give more life than the ways of the world, and that following you is better than chasing after selfish goals. Help them to take failure, not as a measure of their worth, but as a chance for a new start. Give them strength to hold their faith in you and to keep alive their joy in your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. My sisters and brothers, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace of the Lord to everyone. Good morning, everyone. We are so blessed today to have with us young people from the Episcopal churches on Staten Island. Last night we had 20 young people here, and it was glorious, and I'll tell you, it was very noisy at times. But it was really wonderful to see all the interaction and the camaraderie. It was truly a blessing for us. So thank you to everyone who came and participated. I'd like to give a shout out to the chaperones, and since uh, St. Mary's was the host church, I had to stay here last night. So I was here last night, as was Pam Mulane from St. Andrews, Catherine Barnett from Christ Church, Christian Gerard from St. Albans, and David Nygaard from Christ Church. Thank you so much for the leadership. It's really great. Next Saturday is our spring dinner. Today is the last day we're taking reservations. So please, if you have not reserved your seat, 
let us know that you're coming. If you don't have payment today, that's fine, but we do definitely need to know what our number count is. I think we're at like 42 at the moment. So um, yeah, we need all final numbers today. So please, please let us know that. And then the following Saturday in your bulletin, you'll see Saturday and Sunday, we're having Welcome to the 50s and 60s, Scenes and Songs from Greece and Hairspray. So that should be a fun night out and there's reservation and tickets for that too. Uh, also in your bulletin are some other highlighted events. Um, in March, uh, so on Staten Island we're having some very important conversations and in March we celebrated the 50th anniversary of the ordination of women in the Episcopal Church, celebrating and recognizing the importance of women and the ordination of women in the church. Come on in. Here's our Sunday school. <laughs> so as we continue with the important conversations, um, you'll see that on May 1st, we're having a forum on welcoming trans siblings. It's, a, it's learn about the LGBTQIA plus identities, ways of welcoming trans people and their families into faith communities, and how the experience of trans people enliven our understanding of God. And I'll tell you, as the mother of a transgender uh, woman, uh, it's important to not only welcome them to the community, but to welcome their families into the community because sometimes we're not quite sure where we fit in. And uh, next week I'll be announcing some other exciting youth events we have coming up. We have a baseball game. We're going to go to the Ferry Hawks in July. Uh, we have an IPC picnic in June and some volunteer events for, for our young people and our older people and everybody who wants to participate. So keep an eye out for some of our exciting events we have coming up, sponsored by St. Mary's and sponsored by the Richmond Parish Council. And again, thank you very much to all the young people that are here with us today. Thank you for all our parishioners that are here with us today. And uh, have a great week. Thank you, Carson. Um, last Sunday, I forgot to announce that uh, Joe Di Giovanni uh, is still uh, recouping, you know, from home from the fall that she had here, and she wanted me to express uh, gratitude to all those that helped her and uh, get her on her way on Easter Sunday. So let's continue to pray for a speedy recovery. Uh, from um, the broken uh, uh, ankle and uh, wrist that she suffered. Um, I want to especially thank uh, Rich Garcia for giving our rose garden a new look, you know, if you look at it. And also, he supervised those that trimmed all the trees around the hedges. Uh, thank you, sir, for all that you do. Thank you very much. Thank you. And again, I want to welcome our siblings. I always want to call them siblings <laughs> because we are all children of God. And therefore, spending some time with us since yesterday, uh, I want to let you know that you are a blessing to us. Many of us uh, that are, you know, up there in age, we now look that, yes, we have a future in this church. Thank you for your dedication. And I want to also thank all the chaperones, their leaders. Pam, thank you so much. Catherine, David, Kathy, and uh, Chris is not here. He had to run out. Uh, but I, I want to thank you for what you are doing. Um, I, like I told you last night, when I see you, I remember those days when I was your age you know, going from one village to the other, uh, doing sleepovers and helping to rebuild churches. Thank you, and I pray that God will continue to protect you and bless you in all your endeavors. Uh, 
adie no uh, uh, visitors here this morning that we need to acknowledge. Daryl, <laughs> you are a visitor, right? <laughs> After two years, right? <laughs> but uh, we welcome you again. <laughs> Ascribe to the Lord, you're not doing his name. Come into his court and bring our friend.
to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all thy company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim thy glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, I took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death we proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all. Presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine, we pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. 
in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. Mary and all the saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the altar of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of thy Holy Spirit, honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are both to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is thy kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. My sisters and brothers, the gift of God for the people of God, come and receive life and health. All are welcome to the Lord's table.
for all that we have been given and for all that we have received, let us pray to the Lord. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and mind in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen.
Amen. Amen to that. Amen. Because he lives, we have no fear. He holds the future. Now, the service here is ended. Let us now go into the world in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs>